The Trial by SR Masters. <laughs> Twelve volunteers, a drug with unknown side effects, would you survive? This is a book about a young woman called Ellie who lives with her mum. Uh, she has a, like a 9 to 5 job. Uh, broke, poor, not financially secure, didn't make it the ring. And she's basically trying to get a break, you know, overworked, stressed out, and you know, she's just near enough done with everything. Ellie saved up a lot of money and she wanted to go somewhere, go on holidays, give herself a wee break from reality, a phrase I like to say. And her mum's ex-boyfriend came to the door and is demanding money back that he's owed. So Ellie, being the kind-hearted person that she is, gave her mum a large sum of money to pay the guy off and get rid of him. Later that day, she goes out for a wee walk around the town and she just happens to go into the bar that her mum usually goes to and much to her heartbreak, she sees her mum in the bar with her ex-boyfriend drinking, laughing away. So her mum lied to Ellie to get money off her. That was the last straw for Ellie. That's the relationship she has with her mum. Her mum Money grabbing the cash potato bitch. So Ellie sees this um, questionnaire survey online, basically offering the person taking it a chance to go on holidays to the Canary Islands, I think. And they're able to, uh, they have to take this uh, drug on a trial. But they'll have, you know, two week holiday living a luxurious life. They get like, you know, like £20,000 if they complete the trial. That's the prize. Everybody takes home £20,000 to spend on whatever the hell they like. So two week holiday, take this drug, you get £20,000. Who wouldn't say no to that? Well, I think uh, anybody in the medical field would probably clock on or something not right about this here. A bit dodgy, wouldn't go into it. But they had to take this drug. So Ellie, uh, being the honest person she is, fills out the survey <coughs> and it's rejected. So she wonders what she did wrong. The survey asks questions like, have you ever stolen? Have you ever been in a fight? You know, stuff like that there. And she answered them truthfully. She hadn't been in any of those, you know, situations. She hasn't done anything like that. She's not that kind of person. So one night she has a few drinks in her and just goes, fuck this and decides to fill the questionnaire out again. Only this time, she lies. She makes out that she has stolen, that she has bad intentions, when she doesn't. This gets her accepted onto the program. Ellie and the group, the group of other people that were accepted, are flown to another country, and none of them know each other, they're all strangers. And they're basically, they arrive at the place, they're given the tour, introduction, and what they're all about, and <clears throat> they have to take this pill at certain times of the day and they have to write down feedback any side effects they get. They don't say what's really in it or what it does to you. They're just documenting what the effects of this drug has on the participants. So first few days everything is just normal. Just normal and people who take the drug, they're all getting along well, everybody is friendly enough. They've got a swimming pool, they've got a bar, they've got a cinema room, you know, and the location they're at, it's, there's a beach and all there, they can go surfing, they can go into the sea, and the place is really nice. Everybody has their own bedroom, their own bath, shower, toilet, you name it, all that. But then some of the people start acting weird. They come out and say that they're getting these thoughts in their own heads that aren't theirs. And some of them have anxiety attacks. Some of them flee eventually. And they don't know how to comprehend it. 
Ellie also finds um, something scribbled into the drawer of her room. I can't remember what it was. But it's basically, it was enough for her to realise that her group were not the first batch of people to go there and undergo through this <coughs> trial, as they call it. So things get a little crazy. People end up dead. And it's a real mystery, you know, as to why, who's doing it, who's behind it, and what's happening to all these people. Can they really trust those that are giving them the drug, that they're, they're receiving the drug from? Now, this book was very intriguing and fun to read. However, I felt that, you know, it could put a lot more. And I find this, the last few book reviews I've done, I've been saying this quite a lot. Maybe I'm just hard to please, but there's nothing that gets me thinking, oh shit, apart from the reason why they're doing it, which is revealed at the end of the book. They're trying, the whole purpose of this drug is that they want the participants to feel empathy. They want to get rid of psychopaths, sociopaths. They want to get rid of all the assholes. The problem is, the drug is freaking people out. They're not responding properly. Because the thoughts they're getting aren't theirs. They're starting to, people who would be narcissists, psychopaths, they're starting to feel empathy. But the drug for some people had the opposite effects where it made them want to kill other people, it made them want to go on a rampage and do things they would never have done before and they couldn't bear it. That's why you don't do drugs. This is why it's called the trial. And it turns out the whole thing is illegal. That it's not I don't think it's supported by the government or anything. It's not FDA approved. Not sure how all that all that works. But um it's something that's on the black market they've gotten themselves into. Very dodgy. But that, that's the whole point, uh, the whole purpose behind this. But it, it really does go into the human psyche, the human consciousness of how we interact and perceive things. You know, the difference between people who are empathic and people who are non empathic. People who have good intentions and bad intentions and how they correlate with one another. The idea, the concept of the book was very interesting, that's why I purchased it. I liked it. I thought, okay, this seems like it's right up my street. I, I finished this book a month ago, and I just didn't know if I wanted to review it or not, because I was just so dissatisfied with the ending of it. It's quite bleak, the ending. You know, basically Ellie and one of the other staff members there she gets involved with, turns out he didn't. he was completely in the dark of, as to how deep and dangerous this really was and it's they're trying to escape ultimately it does get a bit crazy towards the end but it ended on a cliffhanger and it's more like to me is that it seriously I don't know if they're going to make a follow up to this book and if they did I'd be in two mindsets about buying it I just don't know like I mean, I was invested in the character Ellie, and all. Oh, in order to get off the island, there's no planes, trains, or local towns. It's just one island out in the middle of nowhere, and they have this boat. And Ellie has a choice to go to the next island and find help, or she can go back for the other fella that she's involved with, put him in the boat, and hope to God that there's enough fuel left in the boat to get to the other end because there's very little fuel left. She decides to just sit on the boat, lie back and rest because she's just at that point exhausted mentally and physically. She's injured as well and she's just burnt out. So she rests and the book just ends there. They also, whenever they're on trial, they're cut off from civilization the rest of the world. They've got no phones on them. Well, they do have like phones, but they're cut off from the internet. There's no way to contact the outside world and let them know that they need help. And it's literally the odds of anybody finding them and for them being rescued, very, very slim. You can tell, I'm sure you can tell by the way I'm talking about this book, I wasn't all that impressed. But like, it wasn't bad. I did enjoy it, it was a fun read. I just expected more, but then 
with any book I always expect more. This, that's not to say that the next person who reads this book won't love it. They'll probably enjoy it more than I will and for play. It's the kind of book, you know, you don't really read before you go to bed or if you're on like a train or a bus, commuter even. You know, it's the kind of book that's just to pass the time. Is how I would read this book. I would give this book mm, maybe two or three stars out of five. Yeah, it could have been a whole lot better. It, re it really just felt like the author wrote the first draft. The first draft made a few uh, corrections and then decided to publish it. Well, it could have been the twentieth draft, but that's what it felt like. It, it really felt like a first draft. Yeah. Don't intend to read this author's other books they may have released. You know, I think it's overhyped. It says brilliant. I brought my page turner. It was a page turner. Yeah. But not an amazing like oh my god, what's next? What's next? I was going, hmm. Yeah. I wasn't going to get here. Fuck. Yeah. I wasn't doing that. You know, I wasn't You want a book that makes you go, oh shit, what's next? Yeah, you know, I didn't get that with us, unfortunately. Uh, I'm just choosing books that are not up to my liking. Mm, I need a book, a book. I need a book that stimulates my brain and makes me go, "Holy shit!" A book that makes me think outside the box. But I do. I really like the cover design. <clears throat> all these white chairs and the red chair, the trial, the title, and all, and it's. <laughs> yeah, that, you shouldn't you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, yes. Well I definitely learned that mistake again. But I like, like the cover design, it's all grey and all and there's a bit of white there. It's trying to be innocent with the white, but the grey is just like eh, it's not as innocent as it looks. That caught my eye. There's like uh three hundred and sixty six pages. More if you want to count the acknowledgements. This is what I mean. <laughs> there really wasn't much to say about this book, but I kind of felt like I should, I should say something. Um, for anybody else that's thinking of buying it, I just see it in Tesco and Asda. I was thinking, okay, I've seen that a couple of times. Maybe I should give it a go. It was, it was cheap. <laughs> it wasn't expensive. <clears throat> so I just thought, I'd pick it up, give it a read, see what it's like. I searched for this book online as well after I finished reading it. <laughs> Do you know what? Well, when I say I searched it, I tried to find other reviews of it on YouTube. And from what I can tell, from what I've seen, I think I'm the only guy on YouTube that's actually reviewing this book. I couldn't find it. It was wanted to see what other people thought of it, what their experience was like. And the, the fact that I can't find, <clears throat> maybe I should look again, maybe I will if I look hard enough, but the fact that nobody else has um, reviewed this book in the time that I spent trying to find an review, not really a good sign. <laughs> Probably should have done that before I bought the book, but I don't, I don't regret buying it, you know. I've read books that are worse, I, at least I actually, I actually was able to finish this, you know. I finished it, I made it all the way through. And I was invested with the characters, wanted to see what was going to happen. <sighs> but uh, don't expect it to blow your mind. Interesting idea. Interesting. You know, you, cr you create a drug to get people to try and get them to develop empathy. You know, and have better human beings. Make, make you know, life better, much more civilized. You know, that, that was a good idea. I just don't think it was executed well enough. God, I hope the next book I read, I am not making any negatives. I really would like to make a positive book review video. I really would. But I'm just really picky, just as much as I am with films. I'm, kind of, I'm just waffling now. Yeah. I think that's all I can say. Bye-bye.